to another episode of the In Motion Media Podcast, and today we are located in Chicago in a really, really cool area in a really cool building. Um, we are at the Chicago Auto Recon facility. Um, this is owned by Anthony Vula, and today we're kind of getting a, a preliminary viewing of the area and the different spots that we'll be able to um, participate in a training um, that will be put on by both Anthony and then Matthew Arndt from Matthew Specialized Detailing. Um, we met Matthew about a month ago at the Gloss University training at the Ring Brothers. He came up on mm -hmm. Sunday. Um, he has been doing trainings for a while now. Um, is definitely a very knowledgeable guy. And I met him through Jason Kilmer um, because they've actually done a training in the past as well. Um, both great guys. Um, so today we're going to be talking with them, uh, talking about the class that will be taking place at Chicago Auto Recons in just under a month from now, Correct. Um, early November, mm -hmm. or just right about a month, um, and kind of getting their background and um, learning a little bit more about them and a little bit more about the training program that they put on because it's very, very unique and it's really cool. And um, this class, uh, myself, David and Jason, everybody involved with Gloss University, Gloss University has a has an opportunity to um, help train at their event. Um, so it's a really cool thing that we're getting a chance to do, and uh, we're happy to be here. Plus, this location is just amazing, which yeah, we'll get so, into. We'll yeah, get into we'll get it, into it. I mean, just to kind of give you a, a little picture of where we're at, where we it's the Matt says it's the Great Lakes feel. It's got it's, it's all, very all great brick lakes. down in the city. Um, so yeah, we're in Chicago, um, just south of downtown. Mm -hmm. It's Pilsen, uh, Pilsen Industrial Corridor is exactly the area. That's exactly where it is. <laughs> um, so they're in the kind of in the midst of a constant renovation of this really really cool space. And uh, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, you'll probably get a glimpse of kind of a walkthrough of the facility as well. And so. if you're not watching on our YouTube channel, you should go over there so you can see this because yeah. it's cool. Definitely. So Absolutely. make sure that Plus you, there's uh, a lot of other content that you should be watching. So yeah, shameless plug. Yeah, we'll, we'll plug it all at the end too about all the different channels and places that you can find Matthew, Anthony, and uh, David and I. Um, so we'll, we'll start off with uh, Anthony Vula first. Um, he's the owner of Chicago Auto Recon and uh, previous owner of a hand car wash that was um, in business for a long time and very well known. Uh, Anthony, thanks for having us here at your facility and thanks for joining us for the podcast. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. So, um, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you and you and Matt met a while back, um, back at the, the hand car wash. So let's, let's hear a little bit about you, um, your history here at Chicago Auto Recon and uh, where you kind of got your businesses started in the automotive field. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so we I started in this, I think, around 2004. I had a construction background, multiple companies, somewhat of a businessman. Grew up uh, in that with my father doing construction and remodeling houses and stuff like that. Decided after um, kind of when it was like 2008, when there was a big crash in the real estate market to try something new. Had an opportunity to um, take over a hand car wash that was located in the West Loop. Um, at that time, it was probably doing only about 10 cars a day. It wasn't really that that busy, and um, they had kind of ran it into the ground. So, you know, re remodeled it a little bit, got it up to, to par, got it going. And, um, you know, we went from, after a, a long two years, we went from 10 cars a day to 140 cars a day, um, unlimited detailing, and started getting deeper. And along that way, I, I met Matt from... Um, at that time, he was well. Right before that, I think he was working for ProFinish, and then he moved into SNS or I AIM, I should say. But, yep. um, and it, you know, he was like a godsend. You know, full of information. Um, you know, we started talking. We hit it off right away. Um, I love the fact that he was really confident about the products that he was using, which a lot of people that are in sales are either confident or not, and they don't know what they're selling exactly. So <laughs> yeah. uh, Matt oh, yeah. breaks it down to all the chemicals and goes into pH balance and stuff that I have no idea what he's talking about, but I know <laughs> it makes sense. So um, anyway, we, we hit it off there. And so um, that company, um, we had a concept originally just as a, as a car wash. We got rated uh, in Chicago Magazine for top 10 car wash. We came in number two. Wow. Um, and um, I forget the guy in Old Town. Um, That's pretty big. Chicago's yeah. huge. Yeah, Chicago's huge. A lot, of, a lot of hand car wash. Actually, right now, they're diminishing one by one because those warehouses, just like this one that we're in now, 
are uh, becoming really valuable and then mm-hmm. people want to buy them either to tear them down or to take over and start a brewery sure, or a business sure. or whatever it may be. So the car washes, hand car washes are diminishing um, just because of the real estate value, really. Um, you know, the need for it is always going to be there, but the mm-hmm. real estate value is another thing. But anyway, that being said, um, you know, we had a concept to, to make our customers happy, do great car washes, do good details. Uh, we started working with... Uh, Go Coast Bentley and Rush over there where you had all those $500,000 cars coming through. That was, that was great for a long period of time. Helped with uh, Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff. Um, we were doing a, uh, at that time we were doing a two-step process. Uh, that was years ago. So we we're doing a two-step, you know, just cut and polish um, and, and you know, take our time and maybe not, not so much wool pad moving into, you know, maybe a foam pad or something like that, a little less aggressive. Um, but we did a great job and uh, we were praised for that at that time. And, you know, it showed in the business. Um, and then we started, I had an idea of, um, actually the way it came about is a dealer had called me, um, Advantage Chevrolet. Uh, they were one of the biggest, uh, Chevrolet dealers, uh, in, in the market at that time. Uh, even though it was a mom and pop owned, they had like four locations and they were doing about 200 cars used a month. So, um, a friend of mine that I'd been buying cars from called me, used to come by as a customer at the shop, didn't live far away, said, we're having a problem with our detail shop. Is it possible that you guys can help us? So we're a little bit far, further away from them. We didn't know how it was going to work out, um, but it uh, didn't take long for me to put together a plan. And uh, we started in the car hauling business. We started, uh, I bought a three car trailer, started with a truck right off uh, Craigslist. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was like a, the, I hate to say there was a total shithole, but uh, anyway, it worked out great for <laughs> hey, us. It works. I kept repairing it. We kept picking up cars. Um, and then, you know, we were, we would average after a couple years of that business, we started averaging at least 15, 20 details a day, which was kind of nice. And we had like a 30 man crew over there, 20, 30 guys. Uh, things were real good for a long period of time. And then I ran into a problem. We didn't have enough space. We didn't have space enough to park the cars. We did, we were, we were fighting over the, the parking lot area and whatnot to see where we we're going to store these vehicles. So, um, it, it, you know, from one thing turned into another and it's always a continuation of energy. Yeah. Uh, we decided that, uh, maybe it was time to expand the location and get something bigger. And, uh, after a, a long two and a half year search, because it's never easy to find a location, um, especially in the city of Chicago, um, with the politics and red tape, um, we ended up uh, finding this location and, uh, it was kind of, everything worked out. It was, it was an easy transition. We decided to move some guys over here and continue with the work that we were doing. Um, and, uh, you know, basically, um, at that, at that point I developed a, uh, one of a kind concept that was a full recon for all dealerships turnkey for their used cars. So it would be literally, uh, you know, detailed touch up PDR dent work, um, bumper sprays, anything that they needed, we would do, uh, uh, towards the end when the vehicle was finished in detail and it was in its peak condition. We would then shoot the photos, 38 shots on average, and we would upload them into their online uh, software and get them posted on their website and also put in their buyer's guides and window stickers in there as well. So uh, basically totally turnkey for the used cars, which they were not used to that. Their average turn was 21, 14 to 21 days. The car would sit on a lot waiting for all these so-called vendors to be scheduled or rescheduled. And uh, we would come in with our trucks, pick up their cars, and then uh, I guaranteed them a three-day turnaround. So wow. it was a three-day turnaround, car ready to go, back uh, at, at keys in the box, ready for sale. And um, that was like, um, it was a big, big uh, jump for them. They were really happy with my service. Um, you know, and then we filled this new place up. You know, we started getting going with the cars, more trucks, more people. Uh, at that time, Matt had I t- totally moved over to s and So I, I really leaned on him to help me with the on up and coming products and what we could use and try to develop um, sort of a simple technique to get these cars done, um, you know, the right way, but efficiently um, and, and not use overuse product and no wastage and things like that. So he was a great help for all that, um, as well as some other distributors we were working with. And, and you know, and then we moved to that concept here for now I've been here about five years and, you know, we got to a point where we're doing about 700 cars a month. Um, you know, and um, it was great. It, it was nice, and um, now we're we're kind of transitioning because of COVID a little bit. We're getting more so less volume, and um, you know, more into the retail business and insurance companies. Do we work with all major insurance, and um, and we have built up a portfolio with thirty two dealerships that we work with, um, as well as relationships with over three hundred and a hundred mile radius. So Very that's cool. why we've now morphed into, uh, it had to happen, right? It was, it was on its way to going that way. You know, in the last 25 years, I can't, I can't tell you how many people that I've trained, uh, just employees that work for me, 
um, that I had to sort of bring them up to speed and train them and as best as I could. So, you know, I was doing all that um, just because it was part of the business. And, you know, you always need employees. You try to do the best you can to help them any way you can. So, you know, we had been training forever without even knowing we were really training. Right? Yeah. Um, now uh, things have changed. We saw that there, uh, that, that this local community, as well as a lot of areas in, throughout Illinois and the nation, uh, need this type of training. Um, any type of training is good. Up your level. If you don't have any training, you don't have any certifications, you know, how can anybody take you serious? So you can't blame it on the business owner. The guy's just trying to make a profit. What you need to do is step your game up. And that's what we're here to do. I think we brought uh, four guys together here that have a lot of experience in this. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And we're, we're all about any form of training, not just, you know, Chicago Auto Recon or, or you guys or anyone else. We're just get it wherever you can get it. You know, if, if there's a, a good facilities out there with the Instagram, with the social media, it shouldn't be hard for you to research a little bit about what you're looking to do. See if you're serious about the, the industry that you're looking to get into and uh, pay for the training. And before you know it, get on your feet, practice with a few cars, uh, talk to your instructors, you know, yeah. uh, uh, you know, get some feedback on how the work's coming out and. And everything will, will work out for you. I mean, it just take a little bit of time. Uh, you know, don't expect everything overnight, but you know, it'll take a little bit of time. And I think that you'll you'll be doing great with this after a while. So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much most of the background. I laid it out. Yeah, no, I, that was really really good. And um, obviously, the as a business owner, there's a ton of value in, in training as a whole. And I'm sure we'll get into it a little bit more um, as we talk to Matt, but. You got a high school right across the street from this facility, so that's kind of how um, some of this training kind of plays in together, and it's kind of a really cool um, business model or, or plan that, that's put together. Um, so training is such a big part of what Chicago Auto Recon is doing and moving forward doing. But what would you, how would you define the business that you're currently doing under that transition? So you you work kind of a um, strictly doing the car wash. You transition to this full dealer service. Um, are you still doing that? as your bread and butter or how has it transitioned to it where it is today or what are you currently doing today? It's a good question. Um, you know, we were doing great and we were consistently expanding. Um, and with that business was you had to kind of always keep extra guys on hand because you need to be able to complete your three day deadline with the dealerships. Um, you know, cause time is money. So, um, you know, that was great. We did that forever. Um, now because of COVID, um, sort of, you know, shook everybody's cage up, rattled the cage a little bit, trying to figure out what the next move's going to be. Um, we decided that um, we had been here a number of years because it's not easy to open up a business and, you know, be successful immediately. So it takes time getting to know the area, getting to know your customer base, understanding what they need, what they're looking for. Um, you know, dealerships, you got to remember, used car business is up right now. So you got uh, around 18 million cars. I think in 18, 2018, there was 18 million new car sales made and about 42 million used car sales made wow. throughout the nation. So obviously that tells you a lot. You know, All the money's being made into used cars. People are not necessarily opting for a new car anymore because of the payments and the money involved. Mm -hmm. So people have transitioned to keeping their used car and making repairs and getting another 10 years out of it, which is very cost effective. So uh, when you start talking about the used cars, there's a ton of money to be made in all these services that we're doing. It's endless, to be honest, and there's enough room for everybody. I mean, it's never going to be to a point where they're ever ahead of schedule. You know, they're always <laughs> behind schedule with these vehicles. So that being said, uh, with COVID kind of rattled everybody's cage, um, kind of screwed up the system in a sense where, where people are not able to move as much, government shutdowns, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Um, you know, thing has to be everything has to be uh, basically changed um, in order to... Um, work around the pandemic. Um, so we decided that at that point that we were just kind of more so focus on our retail for a while instead of the wholesale business and work with the insurance companies more and um, try to sort of up our game in a sense on, um, you know, the work that we were doing, you know, bring up our tickets, bring up our gross revenues and whatnot and um, do a bigger scale of work. Uh, yeah. It gave us, it actually gave me the pandemic was, it was really good for me because it gave me time to focus on that. Uh, previous, when you're doing 700 cars a month, you have no time, yeah. right? Your time, you, you, you pay for time. 
Yeah. Right? I'll pay somebody to buy back my time anytime. But I, <laughs> in this situation, I was lucky enough. It was actually lucky that this happened because it gave me time to focus in a different direction. And it also gave me time to put together the school. I mean, we were we were talking. Matt and I have been having this conversation now for over two years, maybe three years. Right. I have, um, if you take the full recon course with us, which covers a lot of different things. I mean, we're talking about body work, touch-ups, PDR, uh, detailing, wet sanding, paint corrections, ceramic coatings, uh, wheel repair, painting wheels and alloy wheels and steel wheels, wheel repair. Um, also, bumper repair, plastic repair, plastic welding. You get into some um, structural repairs. Um, and uh, if you take the full course with us, um, you'll part of that course, you'll get to have two hours with me every Friday where I've developed a 187-page business development manual. It took me three years to put my thoughts on paper. And I will give you the ins and outs of everything I've ever dealt with with regard to business in the last 25 years. I have nine corporations. I've been doing this for a long time. I understand business very well. And um, I will I will break down my, my trials and tribulations over the past 25 years, and I think you're going to love it. Um, so all that kind of comes with the full training. You know, mm -hmm. if you decide to take uh, specific courses with us, like detailing or wet sanding or whatever, we decide to do two-day courses, five-day courses, that's fine too. Of course, you don't get to take advantage of the business development class because it takes time and it's not in the schedule. Yeah. Um, but that being said, um, I think there's just a lot of opportunity to gain in that sense. No, I agree. I agree. Well, I appreciate all that. That was, that was really thorough and kind of answered all my questions as we went through. So we'll kind of uh, shift over and and talk with Matt. Yes, sir. Uh, Matthew Arndt is the owner of Matthew Specialized Detailing. He's got a, a long history in the, the market as he was selling um, products in the detail market um, prior to starting his other businesses. Um, so he's got, you know, just years and years and years of experience, not only using the products, but selling them and watching the market change as well. Um, Matt has been teamed up with Anthony here to um, start this program. Um, you've done a, cu a couple of them already or just the one? So minus the, you know, working with Anthony's employees over the years, um, which was always ongoing training, we've, we've really only done one official training here that was open to the public. Awesome. Well, we'll get in to Matthew. Matthew, uh, thanks for having us again. Thanks Absolutely. for having us be part of the, the training program that you both are putting on. Um, we're really, really excited. I'm, I'm stoked to have Kilmer come into town. I'm stoked to see uh, what you guys do. That's um, obviously different than anybody else is doing in the in the training sure. area, especially the detail training. But um, it's just a little bit different, and I think it's really neat. So we're we're honored to have, be a part of it. Great. Um, tell us a little bit about your history and um, <clears throat> everything from how you got into this industry, um, how you and Anthony met, which we kind of already know a little bit, and then. Uh, all the way into where we're at here today and the development of your training program. Absolutely. So uh, first of all, thank you guys for, for taking time to come and set this up. And, and this is a long time coming and I'm excited for what the future has to hold. But my career in automotive has, has been a very long one. And, and a lot of times people forget and even sometimes I forget that my, my career in the automotive world started at the dealer. Um, I was in the work program in high school and I was able, I was in automotive and we were uh, able to get out of school a little early and my mom would drive me home from school and I'd grab a little snack and go over to the local car dealership and I started working for them in 97. And at the time in 97, it was a, a Pontiac, a Honda and a, a Hyundai dealership. And that was really what like lit my fuse in automotive. It was working, you know, I was a porter, started working for the dealer as a porter. And, uh, my which is a pretty killer job at that time. Yeah. Oh I yeah. Mean, it, honestly it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's like bumper cars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, you're, like, you're, I'm making decent money. I'm getting to do some cool stuff. I'm not bagging groceries and absolutely hundred percent. And, and the cool thing, what I didn't know at the time was, I mean, the, a lot of the management at the dealer really gravitated towards me because of my personality. But furthermore, I was out of all the people that worked there, I was really close. I was like a mile from the dealership. So as the years went by working for the dealer, my responsibilities grew because I was passionate about what I was doing, but I was also close. So, you know, I, I started taking on snow removal in the wintertime at the dealer. And, um, so working for the dealer for a number of years, you know, out of high school, um, there was a local distributor that was bringing us supplies to the dealership. 
which is a whole nother podcast we can get into in the future. But <laughs> I befriended the, 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 the distributor. And as we built a relationship, you know, as my experience, or I should say, as my responsibilities grew at the dealership, I started, you know, became the purchaser. So the, the route truck would show up and I would buy, you know, the soap and the degreaser and all that stuff that we needed to, you know, do our duties at the dealer. So I started after the things changed at the dealership, I ended up going to work for this local distributor uh, in Chicago called Pro Finish. And I was with them for a long time, really was a great experience uh, running the route truck. And at that time, you know, when I started working for them in the early 2000s, it was, it was really before the smartphones and the social media stuff really exploded. So it was a really good time to be in the route truck making sales. And um, the owner, Kevin, had, had turned over, you know, I trained with him for like the better part of a year before he set me loose. And when, when I went out on my own, I had about one day's worth of customers. And at that time, that route truck was generating maybe, if I remember correctly, it was, it was in the teens, maybe 15 to $18,000 in, you know, sales for the month. And I had to go out and cultivate and, you know, knock on doors and start pushing products. So it was uh, definitely not an easy task. And there was a lot of no's. And, you know, I, w I was out in the field in the route truck every day, Monday through Friday, uh, cold calling on car washes, detail shops, body shops, municipalities, basically everything, you know, that, that was under the washing and detailing umbrella. Because at the time when I was in the route truck, we, you know, we inventoried somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 part numbers. And when I would go out in the field, I, I carried, you know, on a, on a full day, I maybe had 20,000 in inventory on the truck and on a, on a light day, maybe, you know, maybe 15, but I'd go out in the field every day and um, I was there for seven years and uh, really grew my route. And I think at, at the peak when I, before I left Pro Finish, my route truck was generating, um, you know, on, an, on average about 50,000 um, in, you know, in sales a month. And I think wow. on my peak months, I was, I would, a couple times I broke into the seventies and got close to the eighties, but that was in like spring, March when, right. when detail and car wash season would really explode. Cause in our, our market in Chicago, what, what happens is in the winter time, car washing picks up and detailing kind of falls by the wayside. And then as the seasons change and we get into summertime, you know, car washing kind of dies off to some degree and the detailing picks back up. So it was, it was a trade off. So, Hmm. Um, power through that, I, um, I, as time went on, uh, had, had a falling out with the, uh, the company that I worked for. And it was a, a really uh, challenging time for me. It was my father had passed away and um, I ended up going to go work for Sears Automotive doing um, like a district manager. Sears wanted to get into detail training and they wanted to start wow. turning some of their automotive centers into detail shops. And so they had said they had picked huh. they had picked uh, I think like five locations in Chicago to to get this uh, off the ground and this was going back to uh, the summer of 2011. Yeah, and so that. while I was doing that, um, the manufacturer from down south uh, had a falling out with a company I worked for and they approached me to become the distributor for their product. Uh, that's the AIM product line out of Atlanta, Georgia. So I, I kind of teamed up with my cousin and we, we bought, you know, bought the route truck and I was back in business for myself, <laughs> which was really kind of a neat thing at the time because we were able to, um, I instantly had a lot of my old loyal customers that were, wanted to buy from me, but we were also getting this Sears detailing platform kind of up and going. And that allowed me an opportunity to have even a little bit more business right out of the gate, you know, sure. out of the route truck. So that generated some sales. So, um, Fast forward a little bit and power through that. One of my business partners had a really good relationship um, with SNS uh, Automotive, which is uh, you know everybody in, in Chicago market it, and knows SNS. And um, it turned out to be a really really good thing for me because um, we were doing really well. We were making money, but I was working two jobs. I was doing the Sears Auto Detail training, hiring and training employees to run the Sears Auto Detailing, doing that you know, from pretty much seven to three. And then I'd go grab the route truck and I'd go out in the field and I was selling to my customers from three in the afternoon, four o'clock. And I'd go, I sometimes I wouldn't get back until nine. So, I mean, I was literally working two full-time jobs and my old employer was doing everything to try to just, you know, shut me down and, and just build <laughs> roadblocks. And so it was a, it was a really challenging time for me, wow. but it was a, it was a, 
an excellent learning experience. And, and at the time when I was going through all that stuff, it was, I look back at it and I was kind of foggy, but there was a lot of positivity to come. Um, and I'm getting there. So my, uh, we, we decided that it would probably be best to just dissolve our business. And we had gotten approached. Our, our, my business partner had talked to the owners of SNS about acquiring us and bringing on the AIM distribution to SNS. And um, I was a little leery about it at the time because I was still kind of green in business. And, and I, yeah, my, it was pulling on my heartstrings and there was a lot of emotion. And so, you know, I think anybody that's been in business, especially in your 20s, you start to realize that, um, you know, there's emotions and ethics. And sometimes it's hard to shut that off and just think about really what's the best. And so at the time, I kind of fought it. But fast forward a little bit, I think right around the end of 2012, we sold the business to SNS. And, um, it got me, gave me an opportunity to get out of the route truck, which at that point had uh, really opened my, my eyes to, to detail stuff or stuff beyond detailing. Because as I mentioned earlier, I had about, you know, 2000 part numbers. Well, now I go work for SNS and there's 80,000 SKUs, everything from nuts and bolts and screws and fasteners and janitor supplies. So what it did is it gave me an opportunity to take what I was the, the relationships I had built over the years, instead of selling that dealership, just detailing supplies. Well, now I got to sell them their toilet paper, you know, and their janitor supplies and their, their bulk brake cleaner and all the stuff that kind of goes in with that. And uh, I really look back at that now and it was, it was all positive stuff. It was very challenging, but the takeaway that, that I, I, I really appreciate now is that as I, eh, Going from just being able to sell detailing supplies in my 20s, it was just all about the products. And as I matured in my craft as a sales guy and had all these other things to sell my customers now, it almost shifted into more of like a consulting thing. And, and really it gave me the opportunity because before I was like, my sales pitch was, hey, I'll save you money on chemicals and I'll teach you guys how to use this stuff, right? But as I matured, I started getting more confidence to work with business owners and say, oh, you're falling short. Like you could, you could add another $5 to this ticket and let me show you how you can increase your ticket sales. And so I kind of got a lot of joy from actually helping business owners, you know, increasing their profits. And that was fun. It wasn't easy <laughs> and I got a lot of pushback, but it was a great experience. And um, tying it into how I met Anthony, I was selling Anthony, you know, bulk car wash supplies for his hand car wash. And, and I remember one time we were, I introduced a product to you about how to the, I think it was the Aqua Glow product that you can tag on mm. at the end to increase, yeah, one. increase your ticket sales a little bit. And mm. so that's when I, I kind of introduced this wash package to Anthony and he's kind of like, wow, this guy met, you know, he, he's not just trying to, you know, sell me products. He's actually trying to help me generate some revenue. And uh, I think that that's where uh, the relationship that I had with Anthony really rounded the bend, if you will, because we started clicking a lot more and Anthony would call me and ask me questions and say, you know, what, what should I do about this? And I would take time and go in after hours and help him and do demos and, and try to help Anthony, you know, increase his efficiency and help turn these cars for the dealer quicker. So it was set up that dilution system as well. It's correct. Yeah. We set up important. the, the hydro miner system. Yep. So really just meter the products a little bit more to, yep. you know, uh, at the time he was just pumping soap and glass yeah. cleaner straight out of, of the barrel. A lot, a lot of, of, lot of waste. So yeah. we did some things to really just kind of, you know, uh, improve your efficiency. True. So, you know, fast forward, um, I was working for S and S and, you know, built this great relationship with Anthony. And I think, a really good friend of mine told me this once. It's like, you know, everything has a life cycle. And, and I kind of hit that point and it was 17 years in the field. I just, I, I kind of just got a little burnt out and I really felt like, you know, I, I was running around in the car and, and I, I wish I had more analytics going back to the early two thousands. But when I was creating, when I wanted to get out of SNS, I sat down and I thought a little bit about, you know, big picture stuff like how and I, I created some very blanket numbers between the three distributions that I was involved with over 17 years. And I, I, I used very kept all the numbers very conservative, but I, I basically um, 260 selling days a year on average, 12 stops a day. Uh, over 17 years of doing it has put me in close to 60,000 brick and mortar facilities of some type. And I was like, 
when I, when I, when I did the math on that, again, keeping it conservative, I was like, wow, you know, I've, I've, I've really seen a lot. And, and I think working with different dealerships, different, you know, municipalities, detail shops, it's kind of like, you know, a chef letting you into their kitchen. You know, you get to see a little bit of the good, the bad and the ugly. And so the knowledge that you take away from that is is really priceless because it's you see guys that are doing things that are really, really, really good. And then you see guys that are doing things that are really, really, really bad. <laughs> and you start to kind of formulate your own ideas about things. And 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 I I got to the point when I wanted to start my own business. You know, I, I wanted. I was so passionate about detailing cars, and and so passionate about this product, almost, almost to a default, and and it drove me crazy because, in a lot of cases, I cared about what my customers were doing more than they cared, and that was uh, mm-hmm. that frustrated me a lot. You know, because I I really my heart was in it, and and then when my customers and clients would fall short it became this accountability piece and it became much easier to just blame the vendor, right? You just blame the, oh, I'm buying the product from you. Um, you know, it's not performing right. Naturally, it's your fault. Mm-hmm. And they don't wanna take accountability for that. And, and um, that was a piece that as I matured in my craft as sales that I kind of started getting tired with because we're gonna tie this into where we're going with detail training, but I'm thinking about this stuff, it's like, as in the, in the new world, uh, which I call uh, the modern detailing world, you know, a lot of businesses are having problems with employee turnover. So I'm going to give you an example of this. One of, my, one of my bread and butter dealerships was Continental Honda, probably one of the greatest groups of people you'd ever meet. And, and they spent a lot of money with me and they bought a lot of product. They cleaned a lot of cars and they were going, their expenders, you know, their expenses were up. And so what was, they would call me and say, hey, we have a new group of guys in here. You need to show them how to use your product. And I've, this was great. This is what I love to do is you know, teach people how this stuff works. But the problem that I was running into is that they would bring in a set of three, four, five guys. I would take time out of my day to go and do my job to train them. Mm-hmm. And then a couple weeks later, a couple months later, they're all gone. And we're back to you know, yeah. square one. And so now, I had, you know, a lot, a big book of business. You multiply that times a hundred and that was happening all the time. Matt, come train, come train, show these guys how this stuff works, which again, I love doing, but when you work a commission job, it's tough to have balance of both where I have to, you know, if I have a deadline to meet or I have to see 15 people in a day, it gets challenging. Sure. So, you know, fast forward, uh, I'm trying to power through this, you know, when Anthony bought this building here, uh, Chicago Auto Recon, is a beautiful building in the industri- uh, Pilsen Industrial Corridor. And he, being that he's across the street from the high school, we um, wanted to start, you know, he had such a beautiful space and I was so passionate about training. We, we all, our pipe dream was like, we should start doing training. We know that there's a need for this. And with Anthony's dealer connections and my dealer connections, I was like, we should start, you know, doing training because... At the end of my run at s and I, I mean, it was probably three to five times a day that I'd walk into a shop and the first thing out of the manager or the owner's mouth is, do you, know, do you have anybody that you know that can come and work? Do you, have, do you know any detail guys? It's always what they say. Do you know, do you, and, and it, it just- Shortage of workers. And me by nature wanting to help people is like I genuinely care and I'm like, oh gosh, like, well, let me see if I know somebody that can possibly help or if I know a guy and, and it, it, it was amazing because we're, we're really running into this in the modern world. We're running into a major labor problem and working in the automotive world is a very hands-on thing. Mm-hmm. You're working with your hands. Machines to this point can't do this. Machines can't pull out a motor and machines can't do the tires and all this stuff. So going you know, into all this stuff, being that we're Anthony's building is across the street from the Benito Juarez high school, um, this was a great opportunity for us to kind of work on bringing in some high school students to get high school students to start to work with their hands and potentially use my contacts and Anthony's contacts to maybe place these guys yeah. in a job in the future. Job placement, yeah. that's, that's what we're doing. So I, I'm, I, I can go and talk about this stuff forever. Um, I'm, how am I doing on time? Oh, oh you're, we're, you're, we're good, yeah. I mean, you're great. That's, that was uh, a good explanation of kind of everything that you've 
um, been working on, and it was kind of interesting to hear about kind of your history. And um, I have a you know kind of a similar path where we've transitioned over the last um, ten or twenty years or so on where you've worked within the automotive industry or, sure. or in the detail industry. And um, I always people whenever I'm talking, people always ask like, "What do you think is like the most valuable thing, or or what what got you to where you are today?" Um, and it's kind of it's circumstance for one. I mean, it's obviously your know, hard work and, and the things that you do for those jobs, how passionate you are and right. um, your work ethic and things like that. But, uh, you know, a number of those things come by chance, you know, and, it, and it's a combination of chance and that, those work ethics and all those things that, that pull in together. But um, as it progresses, you know, especially like maybe mid 20s to 40, you know, I would say in that range, it's like some of the most important and influential things for what you would view as your career, you know, and, right. you know, and, and that's a big part of progressing more than just your career, but progressing towards potentially retiring, yeah. or if you like to work, continuing to work, but putting yourself in a position to retire. Correct. Um, they call it your power years. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I would agree with that. Um, going back to that, I, I, you know, one of the things I think of is that I always say that the dealership was one of the things that I, really took away that probably taught me the most and it was um more towards the beginning of my career um it was the beginning of my official detailing career it was when i transitioned i went to school for collision repair but i really you know went through a couple of phases from collision repair to automotive uh mechanical repair and right um and then got into detailing afterwards um but being able to run through hundreds and thousands of cars, you know, like a high volume shop yep. um, has given me the, the skills and the understanding, but more importantly, like the unconscious skills and gut instinct and all those things that you obtain over years. I feel like you can really, really push that very fast working through dealerships or working through high volume um, shops. Sure. Um, especially if you have the opportunity to do like wholesale cars because you can damage them and it right, doesn't right. matter. <laughs> yeah. But um, but I think a lot of those things have taught me a lot of a lot of that stuff. But the other thing that I took away was um, educational value and like how how much education matters not only to the technician but to the business and um, how valuable it can be as long as you can get through to the person that you're trying to train or, or, or educate or, or sell product. Let's say your goal is to sell product. You're doing it through, you know, providing them that education. What was one of your, um, what was the most valuable, valuable part of your career? Um, both of you actually, mm -hmm. but then, um, what was the most valuable part of that? But how would you break through trying to educate detailers or shops where they felt like they already knew? So that that that's a great question, and I, I if if my old employer is is listening, if Kevin were to ever listen to this, I, I, I Kevin was a very smart man, and my trick that I learned from Kevin, I have to give him credit for it, is um, you almost need to third party sell, because and and by third party I mean like if you were to walk into any type of outfit and you see seen someone doing something inefficiently or something that I knew was wrong or poor or whatever the case may be, I would, instead of me approaching that individual and say, listen, you are doing this wrong, I would kind of try to downplay it and be like, I want to show you this really cool thing that a friend of mine showed me. And I would have never believed that it would work, but let me just show you. Let me just show you and I want to see if you think you like it. And that's that's kind of how I would do it because mm -hmm. if, if, if you walk into any shop, and it doesn't matter if it's detailing or, or body work or whatever it is, if you walk in and you tell somebody right away, you're doing it wrong, they're going to be on the defense instantly. Absolutely. Yep. Even if yep. they are doing it wrong. I don't blame gonna, them. I don't blame yeah. them. You know, so I would, <laughs> I would try and, 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 and do that third party sell where I would just try and not sell, but just try and show. You know, let me show you something because we we all know that seeing is believing, and if I if I if if I was not, and did it in a non-threatening way, where it worked and they and their eyes lit up in the light bulb moment, now I can walk away 
And I just left that little seed to marinate with that individual mm-hmm. yep. for a while. And then when I came back next week or a week after, we could kind of recap, you know? And so it was, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a slow sales process. That's interesting, actually, because it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of that talk trigger book that I was telling yep. you about that I read. It's the and, same thing. and it's essentially a, a marketing book on, on effectiveness and, and what, it, what talk triggers are and, and how it, you know, spreads and, <clears throat> and essentially gains more business. And sure. it's, you know, the, the, the payoff from you seeing an advertisement from X brand versus David hearing about X brand that you saw and tried it or somebody showed you and you thought it was amazing. You telling him about it is way, way, way more effective than any of the other advertising. So essentially you're taking that aspect of it and saying, Hey, let me show you what somebody else showed me. And it's like, Oh, okay. Well now you're putting, it's like, well, I saw this great thing. Let me show you. Right. And, and they're at that point you're, you're helping them. You're not yeah. selling. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Not, you're like, then, Hey, let me show you this. Like, this is really cool. Yeah. yeah. And it's not even necessarily in a marketing aspect, but it's uh, a way to garnish communication, I guess. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Like no, absolutely. Like yeah. And then the word I would use would say, how do you resonate with these people? Yeah. Right? Get on their level. Right. right. Uh, make them understand exactly what you're talking about without being offensive or too much criti- criticizing. You know, it kind of does affect people's feelings and people are a little bit sensitive nowadays with everything yeah. going on. But like I, you brought up a great point when you said high volume shop, right? That we were so high volume, and I want to throw a shout out to all the local dealerships that we dealt with over the past 15, 20 years. Yep. Um, as you said, it same thing happened to me. I mean, I touched 50,000 cars, right? Mm-hmm. And you're going to learn something when you touch 50,000 cars mm-hmm. and over this, over this period of time. And a, again, it, it just like you said, it brought me back to gut instincts, understanding exactly what I've been through in the previous situations, how they worked well for me or didn't work well for me, and whether I took a loss or was profitable or what happened during the process of us doing these type of applications that we're talking about here today. Are we doing them correctly and correctly? efficient, not efficient, so on and so forth. Right. And I realized uh, in the end that, um, you know, I want to thank them for the time that I put in with them, the hard work that I put in for them, but they gave me now the knowledge that I needed to move forward with what I wanted to do. And that's what we're really trying to give back to all these young students. We're saying, hey, you know, this is a collective people here that we've been doing this over 25 years. You're going to learn some things. Yeah. Yeah. And um, even when the guys come through the shop, if I hire a new employee, I don't stand over them and watch everything that they're doing every minute of the day because I don't have time. Yeah. So I kind of let them do their thing. I we talk about what needs to be done, of course, and I give them my opinion of how it should be handled. If in case they have a different, I'm open to learning. It's a never, ever, never ending process of always learning, learning. So if they have something that they would throw into the mix, I'd love to see it. And again, with with regards to product and things, I believe we're all from the show. Talk is cheap. You know, we're all from the show me state. I want, I want to see it. Yeah. You know, what can you do? What does this product do? Show it to me. If you can't show it to me right off the bat, I'm not going to believe what you're saying. Yeah. Yep. Right. Because there's just so many products. There's millions and millions of things going out there. You need to see it. And, and if you got a good guy, a good person, salesman, instructor, whoever it may be, that is going to lay it down for you and actually believes in the product, they should have no problem with demoing what they're showing you. Yep. And in fact, you might learn a few new things for the day and uh, move forward with uh, new ideas and be enlightened a little bit with what's going on. So right. no, I agree. And I, you know, 80% of detail work or, you know, things related to detailing work nowadays with either education or even YouTube, almost anybody can do this stuff like realistically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And there's a certain level Especially with the new buffers, with the new technology. Yep, yep. I I would 100% agree. And and there's a level to it. I mean, I would say it's it's 80%. It's not exactly what we do, but um, but the other 20% of it is is not just what we're doing, but the like they'll say those unconscious skills that you learn. Like, uh, not only a car pulls up and you say, "Well, there's no way I'm touching that shit." This this. I can see that I, I don't want to touch this part because it's been resprayed. This part's already been polished through or, and you can, you, you can see it right away. You, you have an eye for it. Mm-hmm. You have gut instinct where you can see certain characteristics. And then there's other times where you can identify like, no, I don't want to, I don't even want to work on this car. Exactly. Um, I'll just, I'll just move on where, exactly. um, I think that's probably the biggest difference between some of the high level professionals. And obviously there's a lot more, a lot more to it, a lot more variables, but um, just having that 
the spider senses. You know what I mean? That's where your gut instinct comes in. Yeah. I go with the gut every time. And like you just said, hey, a few cars that come through, maybe you don't want to touch. Those are the best ones. Leave them alone. Yeah. Right? Most profitable in that sense. You don't have to get involved in the disaster and the brain damage. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, Well, let's let's move forward a little bit. I I think we got the the training coming up in a month. Um, I know there has been some confusion in the past, so I, and I and I think it's a really funny because technically both businesses have a, a similar type of a sure. uh, history to them. But um, Chicago Auto Recon, in comparison, and or being confused with Chicago Auto Pros, is the one of them. Um, and then with Jason Kilmer and all of us being involved with Gloss University, you know, kind of the difference between what our Gloss University class is and um, what what Chicago Auto Recons are doing with their con- continued and full program um, that, that that takes place at Chicago Auto Recon. So, um, it, it like I say, it is funny because the uh, the owners of Chicago Auto Pro uh, Chicago Auto Pros, um, Greg and um, Jason Otterness, they have a similar type of a relationship where Greg had a, a history in chemical sales, more on the car wash side. And Jason was on the detailing side. They kind of joined their forces to create, um, Chicago auto pros and, and their YouTube and a bunch of different things. But, um, here at Chicago auto recon, uh, Matt and Anthony are essentially doing something very similar, but completely different. Yep. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about, I guess, maybe some of the confusion that, lies in between those three ent- entities and um, um, not not a comparison because you guys are all awesome, um, but where the differences might be between Chicago Auto Recon and Chicago Auto Pros. I'll start first. Yeah. Um, and I've never been out to Chicago Auto Pros, although I am a fan on their Instagram page. Yeah. I'm always watching Jason, what he's what he's up to, what he's doing latest with his car or the motor's destroyed or whatever. Yeah. He's trying to get that fixed. <laughs> the GTI. Yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of drama <laughs> with that. So uh, that being said, the one of the uh, the one things that we have to point out is um, you know, Chicago Auto Pros. I don't know exactly where their f- facility is. I believe it's in the outskirts of the city of Chicago. Um, we are located in Chicago, right? Yep, so that's city. one big difference. Yeah. Um, I think they're in Lombard or something yep, like that. One of in Lombard, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was one big difference. Um, and another thing is that um, I know they, I think if I'm correct, they do uh, high end detailing because I, I seen, I think he charged like one one car was like $10,000 detail or something. That was a big yep. video on that. Yep. And I wish I could get 10000 for the details. I would love those. Um, so there was like, I know they do high end detailing, I know they do PPF film. Um, window tints. Window tints and is in the ceramic, yeah. right? Is that the bulk of their business, I, I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think the majority of it. So, you know, when you try to, really there's no comparison, right? They're, they have what they do. I know they're really, really good at what they do. Yeah. Um, and they, char- they charge for those things that they, what they do and they do a great job from what I can see that they're doing online, the, 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 the way they handle the business, even their, their location is, is nice. They yeah. did a really good job with the location. Um, but, you know, this is a totally different feel. You know, we're in the Pilsen Industrial Corridor. Uh, this area is blowing up right now. I mean, uh, West Loop was was huge 10 years ago. This is the next thing. There's nowhere else to develop. So this place is, I mean, they just sold across the street from us. They just sold two city blocks for like $80 million and Oof. big development going on right now. So a lot of things are changing this area, but it's still, um, I would call it like, it just still brings it back to the original Chicago, you know. 18th Street is is known and a super nostalgic area. A lot of there's they're big on art over here, so it's a whole different animal, basically. Um, that being said, um, you know everything about us and what we're doing is very tangible. So it's all out there on the front lines. You know, uh, we do full collision, right? Uh, so we're 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 body we're chopping cars in half. We're removing motors. We're we're doing mods on cars. We're upgrading motors. Like if Jason has a problem with that GTI, bring it over. We'll modify it. Maybe you won't have the same problem that you're having with the clutch. Right? <laughs> Make some changes on there. So we love installing chips and things. We do all type of suspension work. We do all type crazy lifts on jeeps and trucks and whatnot. That's another big thing that people a lot of jeeps coming through here that they want lift work, suspension work done. We work with all the major insurance companies. Um, we have available spaces. I don't know how many square feet their building is. Uh, not that it matters, but I think we're about 26,000. It depends on how we use the space. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, big facility, enough room for the training in-house. And then we don't want to just... And one of my big things that we were talking about earlier before the podcast is, in my opinion, you know, you need to have a few tricks up your sleeve, 
right? Uh, and you probably have experience with this. I mean, you said you went for collision training and whatnot, and then you went into mechanical and then detailing. So, you know, if I were to get somebody off the street that comes in a door, and I, we're always looking to hire, okay? So if, if I'm getting somebody off the street that tells me, oh, you know what, I have a little bit of experience in this one thing, whether it be car washing, detailing, whatever, even mechanic, we call them soft mechanics where yeah. maybe they don't do heavy work, but they can do brake jobs and oil changes and things like this. Um, you know, if somebody comes and says, I only do this one thing, I only got one use for them. So I can try to give them as much time as I can, but I'm sure sooner or later they'll fall short. Right. But somebody that has developed multiple skills and can come in and say, well, you know, I'll do your oil changes. I'll do your suspension work. I'll do your tire changes. I worked a tire machine before I'll plug tires, whatever you need. Um, you know, I'll jump into detailing, wet sanding. And I have a little experience with buffers and rotaries and you don't have to be seasoned. I can polish you off the way I want you, but you know, you come in with a few things under your sleeve. I'm hiring you immediately. Mm -hmm. Immediately. I need you. The attention is needed immediately. So I think, individual like myself there's a lot of people like me out there right mm -hmm. i know 32 dealerships i we talk to like 150 to 300 you know we have open relationship we try to sell them before we've been through and the only only people we deal with is um general managers used car managers owners right and it's always the same problem hey anthony can you send me a few guys we're short staffed i mean it's an ongoing and i've never ending problem that they're going to have mm -hmm. so that being the case you know we figure out to send these guys people with a little bit more experience, um, they're going to be happy to take them and they're going to get what their needs taken care of. And that person that's doing that job is going to get their needs involved too, because this is all about putting uh, food on the table at 5 PM. It has to put food on the table at 5 PM. A lot of times in this neighborhood this is primarily Hispanic. And you know, a lot of times the way their families are run, and I've been dealing with these, these people for a long time. So I know how they, how they work. And you know, the, the younger kids, they depend a little bit on the kids to, as they grow up, they become older. They depend on the kids to help with the family funds, right? Mm -hmm. To help pitch in so we can all get together and, and work this out. And it's, that's, that's what's needed. It needs to be able to have some type of job that pays well, a living wage and above. And, you know, I don't know, because you guys are you guys are from Wisconsin, right? Yep. So I, everything's a little bit different on what they pay the scale. I know California is different and, you know, East Coast is different and Midwest is different. But in the end of the day, if, you know, you have a few things up your sleeve, you shouldn't have a problem making anywhere from, if I broke it down to hourly wages, $20 an hour to $45 an hour, uh, depending on what you can do. And if you broke it down into commission and or yearly salaries, 50 to 150,000 a year, it depends yeah. how hungry you are and how much you want to work. Also how efficient you are and how much training you had. So yeah. the more training you get, the more certifications you'll have, the more sort of, and even for my shop, if you come to me and you have certifications, I mean, I list them on my wall. I ask you for a copy of your certification. I throw it on my wall. And the first thing I do is when, when I negotiate with the insurance company over a vehicle that we're repairing is I mention my certifications and, or my technician certifications. And that allows me to get a little bit more money to cover costs, mm -hmm. right? Cause they start paying more attention. Oh, you, you may have more experience than we do. So we'll take you more serious or a little bit more leverage on a, on, on something you disagree about. <laughs> that too. Yeah. <laughs> that too, that leverage helps. You know, yep. Don't do anything without leverage. Yeah. So, uh, but that, that's, I think that's the simple way to put it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think the long term plan, you know, when Anthony and I started talking about this, first of all, Chicago Auto Recon, as you guys see, is, is it's unique. You know, it's a unique building and it's a, it's got great bones and it's got great potential to be even more than what it is today. Sure. And I think that um, the just, just standing in the building, it gives you a good feeling. And I think, you know, it, it, you can do trainings really anywhere around the world, but having a place that has, makes you feel good, you, I think you take it a little bit more seriously. You know, when you're, when you're here. Weird vibes like, in this building. Weird yeah. vibes. I got to tell you, <laughs> weird vibes well, in I this think, building. I think the high school adds to it too. I mean, the, the level of um, training when it comes to, you know, high school education, being involved in the auto shop program, I think that's really, really cool. And, you know, Gloss University, we're, we're here on behalf of this class um, with Chicago Auto Recon, but I, I anticipate us, you know, continuing to do um, some different training programs on both sides, whether we have uh, Matt um, and or Anthony come join us for one of our other classes um, or uh, participating in another one of their classes too. Um, and um, it's just, the way, everything that all of us do, um, all different, all three different entities, is all a little bit different. And obviously, there's some crossover, just like in your business. Uh, right. There is some crossover, but it's it's very obvious when you walk in here that the businesses that you both have are completely different. Sure. Um, so that that's really really cool. 
Um, I guess we can we can kind of wrap it up by talking about um, what's going to be happening for the train in in November. Sure. Um, it's going to be. Well, what are the dates? The seventh, November seventh, and November eighth. November eighth. Uh, we're doing them on a Saturday and Sunday this time. Yep. Yeah, Saturday and Sunday in November here um, at Chicago Auto Recon. Um, what types of people will be attending? Um, how many people are going to be here, and um, what are we all going to cover? Sure. So that's a great question. Um, like I was talking earlier with a lot of my contacts before, there's a lot of my old customers, whether they work for the car dealership or they own their own business doing detailing. Um, some of those, I, I would say a good percentage of those guys still gravitate towards me to ask me questions daily. Um, if it's not some of the guys that I used to work with at SNS, I mean, I, I get someone on a daily basis reaches out to me to ask for advice. And I think that's like, I gravitate towards that, right? And um, so this upcoming class that we're doing in November, it is going to be some of my old customers that want to step up their game a little bit and have, they wanna be, in, increase their network and learn from some more industry professionals. And those are like seasoned detailers. Some, These yeah, are people some that have of have been in doing it for a while. And like you said, I, I do have a couple independent, you know, um, owners that own the business, but are also going in the back and running buffers. And so when you're, when you're working in the business and you're working on the business, sometimes it's hard to step back and, and take time to educate yourself. Yeah. Yep. So some of the guys that are coming are guys that want to block off a, a, a window of time mm -hmm. and go to a different place because I've always believed that in, in my 20 years of training guys, a lot of times I'm training people, you know, in their facility and that's tough for both parties involved because if I'm at the dealership and this guy's wearing a couple different hats and it's like, I'm in the middle of showing him something and he's, oh, they, they got to go shuttle a car or they got to stop and then I have to wait and they're like, where were we? How many it's, times we had that problem together? It's, How it's, many a times? Not, it's a very inefficient <laughs> thing. So I think it, there's value in kind of taking yourself out of your comfort zone or your brick and mortar facility, going to a different place, working with other professionals yep. and, and networking. And I, I like that feeling. So one of the things, um, you know, we, we always see the, the, you know, in the modern detail training that's going on, you, we see a lot of guys where we're training, uh, you know, on pain correction stuff, which is super valuable to learn. Um, but I think I, I kind of like to almost break things down f from the beginning. You know, my background selling chemicals, you know, degreasers and soaps and all this stuff, I have a lot of actual chemical knowledge that I think plays value or you know, has value in your prep work and interior work. Um, and in this detailing class that's coming up, we're gonna be doing um, some more paint, we're gonna be doing paint correction stuff, but we're also gonna be doing a lot of prep work and chemistry, pH cleaning factors yep. and interior detailing because there's still a lot of value, in my opinion, for people doing interior details. I think and it's one of the things people miss on, on trainings, too. I mean, obviously, Gloss University was focused on exterior things, sanding specifically, but yeah. um, that's one of the things I think almost all trainings miss. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, when they're just getting into it, especially if it's a if it's a hobby or something that they're trying to do on the side, they don't have a two thousand dollar extractor, they don't have a thousand dollar steamer, they don't have a lot of these yeah. um, mm -hmm. upgraded tools that, uh, you know, I don't I don't know why, but it just seems more justifiable to spend three four hundred dollars on a polisher when you're doing these things. But then right. you look at a steamer or you look at these things, you're like, man, that's a it's a really big cost, you know, and um, and they are, um, but it gives you an opportunity for, for one to see these tools, see how they work, try them out, and then even if there's an opportunity to, to try multiples and understand what's the best what's the best fit for what you do right. and, and what you want to accomplish. Sure, and and uh, there's a we're going to have another instructor here on and November and seventh uh, and the eighth, and his name is Ruben. He owns uh, a carpet cleaning business, and Ruben had reached out to me like last year because he wanted to learn more about detailing exteriors and he you know spent a, a, a number of years you know cleaning high rises doing commercial carpet cleaning stuff and so he's Ru like the carpet master the I gotta admit the guy is crazy <laughs> well and Ruben is Ruben's really passionate about it and and I think that where I'm going with this again more like we touched on earlier about people kind of getting offended if you tell them that they're doing something wrong mm -hmm. maybe they just they're not doing something wrong maybe they just don't know 
Maybe sure. they're just lacking a little bit of, sure. of knowledge on, on real application process. Like, okay, um, you know, a lot of times in my own detail shop, I still do a lot of interior detailing. And I would say 70% of those, I'm not using an extractor. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and not I can needed. still, it's not needed. I have some other detailing tools and essentials that help me do a very good, efficient job. And I know when to apply the chemical. I have my own workflow process that I've developed that works for me. And I would like to share some of that stuff because, you know, yeah, we all want to, you know, master paint correction. We all want to make sure we're doing a really good job. But there are a lot of, uh, I, I don't want to pick on them, but soccer moms that want their vans detailed and cleaned up. And so there's, I think that's kind of uh, something that's been kind of forgotten about. And at this next class in November, we're going to have a handful of cars set up where we're going to be able to showcase you, you know, uh, the value of using an extractor so guys can try some expensive extractors and see how they work. But we're also going to be doing some other stuff where we're not going to be using extractors. We're going to be using, you know, wet dry vacs to still get different results and yeah. properly prepping the car to get the desired result that you're looking for. Yeah. Prep, prep is everything. Uh, and let's face it, most of the time, 80% of the industry uh, and I'm not talking necessarily mechanical work, but you know, detailing and whatnot. They don't have any training. What they do is they learn from the people that they work with. Yep. So you come in and now all of a sudden you're an employee and you've been tasked with this burden of training this person that just came in on how, what you think that you're doing appropriately or inappropriately. Yeah. And um, in the end, neither of you had any training. So yeah. now you're basically wrong from the beginning and you could use some training, some certifications to help you understand this process a little bit better. And I think you're going to see a total difference, right? Yeah. It's going to be a night and day. It's just going to be like a wake up call. And before you know it, once you master this, you can easily move into other things, right? Because yeah. you've already mastered this craft. Yeah. Well, and I want to touch on something on this. I, w I meant to say this earlier is that before I left SNS, I remember I was waiting, I was at one of my dealerships and I was waiting to speak with the parts uh, director to procure a PO to place a big order. And I, I was talking to the guys at the parts counter. I said, you know, where's Steve? Where's he at? Oh, he's in the training. And, I, and as I'm waiting for it, I'm like, I can't, I have to see this guy before I leave. So I started thinking about this and I was like, only in the dealership does the parts department have ongoing training. The service department has ongoing training. Sales department has ongoing training. They're even training the receptionist how to answer the phone. So why are we not taking that detail department in the back a little bit more seriously? Because I think if they did, they would increase their results exponentially. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I see that a lot. It's like, you know, we train everybody in the dealer, but the detail guys, they can do whatever they want. No, I mean, I've, I, I've, talk to people that run businesses on the East coast where they've essentially done that because so many dealerships look at, um, uh, detail department as kind of like their, their profit loss area of the business. And, yeah. um, really it should be a profit generator and it can be ran a number of different ways, but they essentially just come in with a, a sales pitch with their own team. They take over the area, you know, you alleviate all the, um, um, all, all the hiring, firing, the, the HR stuff, mm -hmm, you sure. eliminate all the, um, you know, chemical stuff with the parts department. Mm -hmm. You're just, you can literally make a laundry list of all the things that you can alleviate the dealership with that yeah. you take, take control of. You bring your people into their facility. They have a design, designated area to work within their facility, but right. it's technically under their company. And, you know, within five years took over 40 dealerships and do a million dollars a month, you know, wow. like 800,000 mm -hmm. a million dollars a month. And so there's, there's definitely ways to, to make money in these areas that they're not, right. you know, really taking advantage of. And I, one of my, um, I think one of the reasons a dealer in a lot of cases stays away from that is because dealers are fighting for CSI scores, customer satisfaction inspection. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so when these people come in to do their, you know, uh, brakes, oil change, whatever, if they integrate a detail service with it, it doesn't matter if, if they, you know, 100% across the repair service was good, but if, if they did a detail service and tied it to that, there's a streaky window or smear on the tire, yes. then they ding them on the CSI stuff. And so the dealer's like, we don't want to integrate it. Yep. We don't want to do it. And I think the only ones that I know that have done, done a successful job at this are the, the dealers that have created like a subsidiary company or an umbrella where it's just like, you know, uh, whatever, auto dealer detail ink kind of thing where mm -hmm. they keep it separate from that. And I think that's why some dealers stay away from providing that cross service yeah. in There's their There's a service. lot of politics yeah. there too. Yeah. Like Competing metrics in the same business. Yeah, exactly. Well, mm -hmm. well put. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so real quick, as we kind of start getting things wrapped up, I mean, the, the next detail training is gonna take place November 
7th and 8th. It's a Saturday and Sunday. We're going to go on Saturday from 9 until 5.30. Mm -hmm. And I'm usually the last, I know we end up staying an hour later more uh, working with guys. And then Sunday will be 9 to 5. And um, obviously David Patterson is going to be here. Jason Kilmer is going to be here. The uh, Sandman. The Sandman in Motion Media. <laughs> Matthew, myself, Ruben. And we're going to, the total cost for the class uh, is $1,200 for both days. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a lot of material to cover. We are going to have a couple raffles and a couple auctions and things to, to give away. And uh, every student's going to go home with uh, a kind of a little care package that we're put together. And I think it's just a neat uh, opportunity to come and just kind of see some of the tools. Like even if you've seen the tool online but never had a chance to use it, mm -hmm. this might be an opportunity to come and, and demo something and try something out with some confidence in a, in a, a nice environment to you know see if it's going to work in your shop or your environment and, and network. And I, I really like that networking piece because I think more if more people networked, they'll 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 build, you know, a good team that they can in the future, you know, lean on. You know, if they hit a roadblock or have an objection with something. And I think that for me that's been very valuable as I've grown. So, so where can people find out more information on this? Do you have a website or Facebook? Or? So I, I have information on Instagram. You can also go to my website. It's uh, www.matswax.com. And there's a, a, a link there that you can click and sign up. And then you can also um, sign up with Anthony. We kind of, as we're growing this thing, because Anthony has people signing up kind of in his backyard here in the Pilsen area, he's handling that side. Yeah. Uh, and I also have people with my network that I'm bringing in. So it's just at, at this time, it's easy yeah. for us to handle kind of collecting that way for, yeah. for Instagram both. Instagram has been really good for us in that sense. I know Facebook is a little bit of a thing of the past and everybody's kind of jumping over Instagram. So we're putting out videos as much as we can, showing what we're doing, a little bit showcasing what we're doing. And then, you know, if you reach out to us directly through any of those outlets, whether it be website, phone number, uh, Instagram message. Uh, and we'll, what are all those uh, for that's you? At, uh, for us, for Instagram is going to be Chicago underscore AR. So for auto recon, uh, Matt's is at Matt's Matt, Wax. It's uh, Matt's underscore wax. Oh, underscore. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so those two is either way would be fine. Um, and then we usually accept payments, whether it be quick pay, uh, or we do PayPal, which is very simple. Yep. Um, you know, we'll shoot you an email and get you signed up almost immediately with, and you could just put your credit card information in and, and get reserve your ticket. Uh, tickets are non-refundable of course, but they could be used to any future available class. So as long as it's not booked, you can, uh, actually use your ticket for that. So, and that's good awesome. for up to one year. And if you guys are listening uh, the, for the guys that are listening. Um, if you are serious and you want to attend, I have created a, a pretty more specific outline of what the class is going to cover and entail. And if you shoot me a direct message, I'd be happy to forward that to you so you can get a little bit more dialogue on, on really what we're doing. And of course, I'm always happy to answer, answer some questions. But um, And let's yeah. be clear too. I want to be clear with everyone that this class is for expert detailers and or people that are just starting in this business. Right. We are going to show you A to Z, how to the start of the process for detailing, how to even wash a car, proper ways to go through um, prepping the car before you go into the detail base. So Correct. Mm -hmm. I think it's huge on that. So you don't have to be like, oh, I'm not in this business. And I don't know if this is going to work for me. This is a perfect class to start learning. And also the guys that are more experienced, don't worry. We got the Sandman. We got Matt. We got David here. All these guys to help out. They're super experienced. They have uh, unlimited information in their mind. You can come up with whatever situation or scenario that you have. Heavy on the wet sand. Heavy on the buffing. Heavy on, on I mean, Kilmer's going to freak you guys out when he starts going 600 <laughs> on stuff. I mean, we use 600 only in, in, in painting when we're going to ready to resurface and paint. Yeah. So, you know, he's going to really blow your line with the dry sanding that's going on. And I want to also talk about a little bit about we never really focus too much on dry sanding. Dry sanding right. versus wet sanding. But maybe we can save that for a future date. Yeah, There we go. Definitely. Yeah. No, absolutely. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And um, there's going to be more to, to follow with this. I know that we are already looking at a date to do another one after the first of the year, sometime yeah. maybe late January, yeah, I late think January. February, yeah. Yeah. somewhere in that realm. I mean, we're, we're kind of, once the one date is behind us, we'll have another yeah. date. That, yeah. uh, but with the holidays and stuff coming, I figured I figured early November because it's just enough time before Thanksgiving. Because yeah. after yeah. we get to Thanksgiving, it's all everything shifts gears. And, yeah, and yeah sure. and I think the class is normally around 20 to 30 people maximum. Um, cause it's a lot, that's enough space and social distancing, what we have in place for COVID stuff and uh, guidelines and whatnot. Um, but that being said though, I know we've already sold out of a lot of the seats. There's just a few left. So if you're interested, you know, now's the time to sign up. Right. 
Yeah, yep. make sure you go check them out. Um, Chicago Auto Recons or Matt's Wax. Um, make sure that you subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, like, comment, share, help us share the word and um, share this video if you liked it. If you're listening on our podcast, um, you can go contribute to our Patreon. Um, check out patreon.com. Um, you can help us there. Otherwise, you can find us on pretty much any of your um, Anywhere you listen to podcasts, or, yep. It's yep. In Motion Media Works on everything. Um, also, check out Gloss University on Facebook and Instagram. That's at gloss.university. Um, and you can find David and I. You can find David at um, center.scene, yep. where you can see all of his cool uh, uh, photography and renderings. Um, you can find us at In Motion Media Works on Facebook and Instagram and you can find me in Motion Dave on Instagram. Cool. All right. Thanks for listening. Make sure you subscribe and uh, make sure you come check out our next episode. 